That old truck was part of what I bought when I wound up buying the plant back in 1970. And it was shot then. It was, uh, I think, a 1960 international ton and a half truck. It was red and did not have a back window and did not have a seat. So I fashioned me a seat out of a wooden box. Probably wouldn't be allowed on the highway today <laughs> in the condition it was in. But if you don't have money to pay the light bill, you sure can't fix a truck. We just had to keep it running. It was really a piece of junk. <laughs> I had a lot of fond memories. That's why we never got rid of it. Finally, somebody said, well, you know, we, we probably ought to restore that old truck. And I said, well, that's what you want to do. Have at it. When I first saw it, I thought, mm -mm, no, 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 this ain't gonna happen. I told him, I said, you better off to find another truck and start over. And then I started hunting a truck, and I found out that wasn't a possibility. And then I started looking up pieces and parts, and you couldn't hardly find it. And it was it was a group project, because me and Bob was both looking all over the place trying to find pieces and parts, you know, and, and looking at, well, is this worth restoring? And then I heard the story of the truck. It was the do or die truck, you know, where you had, you know, the last minute load and all this stuff. And it was, it was very, very emotional. So I felt personally attached to this truck. Now I had to figure out a way to make it all happen. Let you go. Imagine getting up every day and never knowing if you're gonna be able to come back the next day. I only had one employee, constantly worrying about whether or not you can pay him, whether you could pay the light bill. For the first nine or 10 months, it was like that until finally, I had just completely run out of money. I went downtown to the Bank of Abbeville to see Mr. Noel Dowling. He had loaned us the money to basically restore the plant to get it running again. It was about $76,000, which is a lot of money in 1970. So I went in that morning in my coveralls. I was nasty and dirty, had my boots. But I had a lot of keys in my hand that went to everything at the plant. I said, Mr. Noel, I need to, I need to see you a minute. He said, yeah, well, what, what do you need, Jim? I said, well, Mr. Noel, I need to borrow $5,000 more dollars. Well, you would have thought I had slapped him in the face. He got mad, it turned red, and he went on this diatribe about how your daddy tried to tell you, I tried to tell you, you were ruining your law career, you weren't ever gonna make it, now you're bankrupt, what do you I'm just throwing those keys in my hand the whole, I wanted to send a message. You say no and I'm putting these keys on your desk and now you got it. <laughs> so after about 30, 40 minutes of berating me, he finally agreed and he put $5,000 in my bank account. I had come to the bank on that old truck and I went straight to Mr. Marvin Tillis' sawmill and had to pay him, write him a check right then. Two bones of two to six twelve. They loaded them on that old truck. Then we treated and took them out, put them back on the truck, and I went to Dothan. And I started calling on the building supply houses, trying to sell those two bundles of lumber. Nobody would buy them. And after I saw everybody in Dothan, I went up for 231 to Ozark. And I got to Mr. Henry King at Ozark Building Supply. Introduced myself and told him I had these two bundles of lumber to sell. He looked at me and said, well, that I probably could use them. I said, well, one thing, Mr. Henry, I said, I got to be paid today. I got to have cash. He just looked at me and kind of left said, son, I've been there. He wrote me a check and he bought them. And I came back and I did that over and over again with that old truck. We used it so much it was beat to pieces. I never thought it would be saved, to be honest with you. So, got a lot of stories. What's physically being done? 
cap's been removed off the chassis. The frame has been stripped down to nothing but the frame. We took a wire brush and cleaned the whole frame. Took it over to Hagen and them, and they painted the frame. Set the motor and transmission back in there. And it went back over to Hagen and came back over to us. And we hooked up all the other Bob stuff. Bob Warfel had all the wood cut mm -hmm. back over to Hagen. The truck has got to be rewired because it has been patched several times and it no worky worky. Install lights. Pretty much it. It's kind of a love-hate thing. You know, some days it runs you crazy because everything that can go wrong has went wrong and nothing works out. And then the next day, everything just flops right in place, you know, and it just moves right along. We've been able to keep 80% of the integrity of the original truck, but I fought tooth and nail to save it and every bit of it that I could to make sure that it represented as much of what the original truck was. Most large corporations always become detached from where they began. Jimmy had never lost it. If you see pictures of the original first treating plant, it is unreal because that building up there that they got now is three acres under roof, which is huganic. I don't think he had three acres the whole time when he first got started. He's very proud of this truck uh, because it represents him and his life struggles and how far he's actually come from where he once was. I mean, you never can count out Great Southern Wood because that truck, it might have been down and out, but it's being resurrected. You know, he started off with nothing, so they twins. <laughs> Inanimate objects can remind us that there was a struggle here a desperate struggle, but right one out. The value of not giving up and uh, a devotion to the values that are in every human being. It's how you live your life. You know, I never ever dreamed that this company would blossom into what it has. But I do believe with all of my soul that that success comes from just standing on the wall, being accountable every damn day, every day. And not because you're pursuing money, but because you want to be the best you can be. You only get one chance in life, one. And you get one chance every day to be the best you can be that day. So what are you gonna do with it?